this sort of passed, I think, mostly unremarked upon today, given all of the other revelations from the committee. But when it comes to Mark Meadows, this seems very important. When it comes to Mark Meadows, we also today got a brand new, previously unheard assertion from his top deputy, Cassidy Hutchinson, about what Mark Meadows did around this time and why he did it. Now, we don't know why they held this piece of Cassidy Hutchinson testimony until today. We've heard so much from her in previous hearings, both on tape and in live testimony. But it is possible that the investigators on the January 6th committee have held this back until today because it's so bad for Mark Meadows, because they are continuing a legal battle with Mark Meadows to try to get him to testify to their investigation. This clip about Mark Meadows today points to Mark Meadows' state of mind, his intentions behind what he was doing in a way that might prove to be a problem for him if he ever faces criminal charges in this matter. During this period, he, um, I perceived his goal with all of this to keep Trump in office. Um, you know, he had very seriously and deeply considered the allegations of voter fraud. But when he began acknowledging that maybe there wasn't enough voter fraud to overturn the election, you know, I, I witnessed him start to explore potential constitutional loopholes more extensively, which I then connected with John Eastman's theories. The White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows seriously and deeply considered the fraud allegations. Basically, he found there wasn't anything to them, and so he then instead turned to trying to find constitutional loopholes to keep Trump in power anyway. That is, I know he lost. I am going to try to keep him in power anyway, knowing that he lost. That moment was not a criminal referral of Mark Meadows to the Justice Department, but the investigators are handing the Justice Department basically like you know, both of the Lego pieces they would need to build a very simple, stable criminal case against him. Yeah, and this ties him to what a federal judge has already called likely felony crimes committed by Trump and Eastman. We now have ding, 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 the third um, sort of piece of the or third Lego, if you will, in that very mm -hmm. simple Lego, Lego structure. Can, can you, I mean, maybe explain how the, I mean, the chief of staff is obviously the most loyal person to the president. They're the closest person in many ways to the president. But I cannot explain Mark Meadows in my own mind. Mm -hmm. well, this is guy, he's like a garden variety birther tea partier congressman from North Carolina. He's not like a Ted Cruz who like styles himself as some sort of 1776 like redux revolutionary. Like he's just some guy who yeah. becomes chief of staff. And why is he willing to risk jail? I mean, he got like a million dollars for his pack from the slush fund. A million dollars ain't worth lying for the president of the United <laughs> yeah. States and fomenting a coup. I cannot make it make sense in my well, mind. Well, he's also different from every other chief of staff, right? I mean, John Kelly couldn't hide his horrent disgust with Trump, as yeah. he yeah. talks about. And, and Reince Priebus, you know, couldn't get out of the Oval and on the phone with reporters <laughs> to leak about him fast enough. You know, that talk right. about like breaking speed records in the West Bank. What Meadows does is he breaks bad. And Cassidy Hutchinson yes, right. tells us what right. happens. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere between right. all the fraud was, in yeah. Bill Barr's words, bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, let's stay in power for four more years. Oh. Meadows breaks back. And I also thought that Cassidy Hutchinson moment there. And again, I've said this before at this very table, but I have to say it again. There is this weird suspension of disbelief guilelessness to all of this. To Eugene Scalia. Eugene Scalia, pretty smart guy. Dad was Antonin Scalia, Secretary of Labor. Like, He's like very sort of like lawyerly. Well, I told him on December 14th that was the end of the process. It's all garbage. <laughs> it's all made up. And guys, none, and none guys, I can tell you. I know quit. the answer. Please call on me. Like everybody constantly having to indulge this. Like, oh, on December 14th, it was done. He lost. It was, and it's a ludicrous set of like all of these people, Bill Barr, Eugene Scalia, everyone taking this seriously for Cassie Hutchinson just to say in her quiet voice, like, oh yeah, once the fraud thing didn't work out, it was how it's, it's about <laughs> keeping him in office, obviously. Yeah, and by, by like, didn't they you, have to by know which that? you just mean there weren't real arguments. There were never real arguments or real factual predicates to any of this. And we've had so much testimony, and I think it's all truthful testimony, of the mountains of labor that are going on churning in right. these five weeks afterwards. Well, it's because running everybody wants stuff to down. help him. It's, a, it's not a real argument. There's not a factual basis for him staying in power. It's a pretext. Yes, They're trying exactly. to see if they can help him support the pretext. Correct. Right, but I do so think... They're, they're right, but that's my question. Is that, That's exactly my question. 
were they, what were they doing? What did they tell themselves they were doing about all these pretextual efforts? They were, they were letting Trump learn the right. Trump way, which is, right. I'm not going to be the one who right. tells right. the crazy man this thing. I'm going to let the elect slowly. I'm going to let the electoral college right. tell him that. Right. And and I think it is entirely conceivable that people like Scalia, Bill Barr, people who've been around government, people like me, <laughs> were watching this thing and thinking, I don't know what Trump believes or doesn't believe, but I know what the electoral college is going to do. So it doesn't matter. Right. And yeah. I know Biden's going to be inaugurated right. on January right. 20th. Right. I know all of this, right? And so I don't care when he figures this out or doesn't figure it out. Yeah. And I'm not going to be the one who goes in and burns myself up. And if I'm Mark Meadows and I want to make money from Donald Trump when he's not president, which is exactly what Mark Meadows wants, I'm not going to be the done. bad news yeah. guy. Yeah. I'm going to let the process show this guy where the bad news is. And then yeah. you get to this constitutional loopholes moment that uh, Cassidy Hutchinson mentions. That was inconceivable to Bill Barr. It was inconceivable to Cipollone. It was inconceivable to me. Right, that's why I didn't know over. that there but were was... constitutional loopholes. Right, right. But the... <laughs> it turns out there right. are, and they exist on January 6th. And one of the constitutional loopholes they were going for on January 6th with the mob, as you say, as yeah. the tool, was to literally stop it. Yeah. If yeah. they don't do it on January 6th, the process, what is right. the, what's the, the next sentence process. in right. the Constitution? Right. Well, Everyone. there isn't one. That's right. And, and, That's and right. can we get it thrown into the yeah. House of Representatives? Right. And if we get it thrown into the House of Representatives, then Donald Trump can win a vote right. in the House. And so to answer Joy's question, the question of who is Mark Meadows and how is he operating here, he's the guy who thought constitutional loophole will do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what it takes in terms of the facility with your citizenship in right. that moment.